Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a somewhat popular tool or resource regarding the EQing process. And this tool or resource is a frequency chart. And there are a ton of different frequency charts out there. Um, there are even, you know, different types of frequency charts. Because basically a frequency chart is anything that kind of plots the frequency of your audio and provides certain attributes to different frequency ranges. So these can, you know, describe note values, they can describe the character of instruments at different frequencies, they can tell you what frequencies certain instruments play in, and, you know, all kinds of things like that. And in this video, I'm going to be focusing on just one example of a frequency chart but it has quite a few different things on it, as you can see. And if you want to download this, I will have a link in the description of this video. So, you know, you could download it and uh, be looking at it while you listen to me talk and just get a better look at everything. Now, in my opinion, frequency charts aren't, you know, the most important thing. Um, obviously, the most important thing is going to be your ears and how you hear the sound and just paying attention but certain charts can definitely be helpful. You know, the value of a certain frequency chart depends on the information it's displaying. So you can see in this example, towards the bottom, your frequency values are displayed. And they range kind of from about 20 hertz to about 20,000 hertz. And that is, you know, pretty much our hearing range, give or take. You know, we can hear from about 20 or 25 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And the exact hearing range will vary from person to person, and as we get older, our hearing abilities in the higher frequencies kind of diminish. So maybe an older person can only hear to about 16,000 hertz or 15,000 hertz or, you know, whatever. So usually it's safe to say that the human range of hearing is about 25 hertz to about 20,000 hertz. And most frequency charts will be laid out with somewhere around there as the maximum and minimum frequency values. And so at the top here, you can see you have a number of different instruments and their frequency ranges being displayed by colored bars. So for each instrument, the range of the colored bar will display you know, the frequency range of that instrument. And to me, this is the kind of frequency chart that isn't super important or super useful. You know, maybe other people have different opinions, but to me, you know, I can pretty much find that out on my own using a spectrum or just really listening. And, you know, it's not going to be hugely helpful in the actual EQing process, in my opinion. But for some of these instruments, you also have certain attributes labeled at different frequencies. And these attributes can be quite helpful. So if you look at the vocals, you know, it will say fullness is at about 120 hertz, boominess is 200 to 240 hertz, and presence is at 5000, sibilance is at 7.5 to 10,000. And it does this uh, for a number of the different instruments. And that is something that I think can be quite helpful, especially if they get even more detailed than that. So, you know, if you look up a frequency chart based on the characteristics of a kick drum, you'll find different frequency ranges given different properties like punchiness, boominess, click, thump, and all that. And that can help be a guide for a beginner if they want their kick to thump a little bit harder, you know, they can boost in that thump range. But in the end, you still really have to use your ears and let your ears be the final say and just kind of use that as an extra guide. Now, below these various instruments, you have a piano keyboard laid out. And you can see certain frequencies pointing to certain keys. And these are all the key of A. And you can see that one of them is 440 hertz. And that's A4 is 440. And that is just the current standard of tuning. So if you play an A4 in 
a synthesizer on your digital audio workstation, more than likely it's going to be playing at 440 hertz. And so, you know, you can look at this to get specific frequency values of different keys. Some charts will give you a specific frequency value for each key, um, but on this one it only provides the A's, and then you can get a decent idea of the other keys just by looking at that. And then below that keyboard you have these brackets that show you which frequencies usually play on which speakers. And you can see that the subwoofers range from 20 to 110. Mid-range speakers range from 110 to 3500. And then the tweeters play uh, 3500 and above. But the most useful section of this particular frequency chart, in my opinion, is this bottom section here. And this just displays different frequencies and provides a general name for those frequency ranges. And to help display this information, I'm going to be playing this song and use an EQ to kind of solo those frequency ranges as I mention them. So starting from the left, you have your sub bass frequencies, which according to this chart are 20 to 40 hertz. And you should keep in mind that different charts might provide slightly different frequency values for the different ranges, and they might be less specific than this chart, you know, they might just say sub bass, bass, mid range, high end, or, you know, any number of things. So again, you know, you don't want to just trust this one chart completely, um, maybe look at a few different charts and take the information from the various charts to get an idea of what exactly is your sub bass, what exactly is your bass and your low mids, your high mids, and your high frequencies. And the reason this will be helpful is because if you want to get feedback on tracks or if you watch a lot of different tutorials, they will talk about these different frequency ranges and you know they will specifically talk about the sub bass or the low mid range and it can be really helpful to have an idea of what frequency ranges roughly they're talking about when they mention that in the feedback or tutorials so in this song this is what the sub bass range sounds like So you really don't hear too much of the sound. You can kind of think about it if someone's driving by with their subwoofers in their car turned up really loud, that might be what you hear. So next up, I'm going to play you the bass, which according to this chart is 40 to 160 hertz. And you'll see on this chart that there are small explanations for each frequency band. Um, I'm not going to read those in this video, but definitely, you know, uh, pause the video or download this and read those because they can um, be kind of useful just to help you get familiar with what those frequency ranges sound like when being described. So for the upper bass band, it mentions that um, that band produces warmth. So if you get feedback on your track and someone says it lacks warmth, they might be talking about it lacking a presence in that 160 to 300 hertz frequency range. So, you know, definitely read through those descriptions and check out some other frequency charts if you want to. Just don't put all your faith into them and, you know, kind of use them as an additional aid. So here is the bass band in this song. So you can hear the higher frequency bass a bit better than you could when I just was soloing the sub bass band. And now the next frequency band is the upper bass band, which according to this chart is 160 to 300 hertz. And it sounds like this.
So you can hear kind of the punch of that 808 kick pretty well in this frequency band, along with a bit of the 808 snare, but mostly the punch of that kick. And then next up you have the low mid, which according to this chart is 300 to 800 hertz. And that sounds like this. And now you're starting to really hear some of the other sounds coming through and the punch of the snare, that 808 snare, comes through pretty well. And then after that we have the mid-range. And when people say the mid-range, they could very well be including, you know, the low mids and the upper mids as well. Uh, so just, you know, keep that in mind and just use this information to get a general idea of the different frequency bands and what people might refer to them as. And the mid-range, according to this chart, is 800 to 2.5 thousand, and it sounds like this. So you can hear that in the mid-range and the low mid-range and even the upper mid-range, there's quite a bit of stuff going on and it can get um, pretty busy, so you really have to keep track of your mid-range when you're mixing and make sure that things sound pretty good in there. Um, and really you should be doing that for all your frequency ranges, but it's particularly important in that mid-range. And so next up on this chart we have the upper mid-band, which is 2.5 thousand to 5 thousand hertz. And in this track, that sounds like this. And so in this frequency range, you could hear that crash symbol and also the higher end of that snare along with the higher ends of some of the other sounds. And next up, we have the high frequency brightness, according to this chart, which is 5,000 to 10,000 hertz. And in this track, that sounds like this. And you, know, you can really hear the high end of that snare now, and the cymbal, and the hi-hat. And finally, we have the ultra-high frequencies, which is 10,000 to 20,000, according to this chart. And you know, it limits it at 20,000, because that's pretty much the top of our range of hearing. So uh, that is what this frequency range sounds like in this song. And so you don't really hear too much of the sound, you know, it's just kind of noise at that point that isn't very clear or anything. But, you know, that adds some nice clarity to the sound and makes it, you know, sound nice and bright and, I guess, professional for lack of a better word, as long as you don't overdo it or anything. So that was just an introduction to the idea of using frequency charts and kind of a bit about how they work and also a bit of an analysis of the different frequency ranges. Hopefully you thought that was helpful. But you know, you can definitely uh, go check out other frequency charts and kind of look at them and just get a better idea of what kind of characteristics the different frequency ranges have for different sounds and all that stuff. But like I said, you don't want to put all your faith in frequency charts 
just use them as kind of an aid to help you get a little bit more familiar with the different characteristics of different frequency ranges. And in the end, you know, it's up to your ears and really paying attention to what you hear. That will produce good mixes for you. But frequency charts can definitely be somewhat helpful if you, if you need a little bit of extra guidance.